Okay, welcome to this next video for uh, Chem 161, continuing chapter 4 materials, where we just further elaborate on ionic bonding. Okay, so in the previous video, we introduced the idea of being able to recognize uh, metals and nonmetals from their position in the periodic table, and how that would take us into one kind of naming set of rules versus another. So today's video will focus on uh, ionic compounds where we bring together a metal and a non-metal, and we have to be able to recognize that from the periodic table, um, combining elements from the left-hand side and the right-hand side of our staircase boundary um, in that periodic table. So we looked at the example that was sodium chloride, and we uh, are very comfortable now recognizing sodium as a metal. Okay. We recognize sodium as the 11th element in the periodic table. Okay, so we know that there are 11 protons and that there must be 11 electrons in neutral sodium. Um, we saw that because sodium is in the first column, it likes to give up one electron. So this is the 3s1 electron will be eliminated entirely. So we will empty the valence shell and then the sodium's electron configuration looks like the next nearest lighter noble gas. So that would be neon. So by losing an electron, the outermost shell is a complete octet, which was that of the neon. And you can see that in the shorthand electro, electro, electronic configuration when you do that. Okay, so we know that this is going to lose an electron. And the outcome here is that we end up with the same number of protons, 11 protons positive, and now 10 electrons negative. And so we end up with overall plus one, and so we end up with sodium plus one. Okay, um, looking at a similar story for the chlorine, we see that this is across the staircase boundary, so we know that this is a non-metal in its neutral form, okay, so Again, chlorine over here, the 17th element in the periodic table. So we have 17 protons, 17 electrons minus. You see the valence orbital listed there. So that is a 3s2, 3p5, seven electrons valence in the total. If we could get one more valence electron, we would be 3p6, 3s2 in the valence electron. That would be eight total electrons, and that would look like argon. Okay, so that's how we complete the octet. So this element, as we saw, wants to gain one electron. Gain one electron, and that will make it 17 protons and 18 electrons. So this now sums up to give negative, and so this becomes chloride. Okay, um, this is a cation, this is an anion, cat, one way to remember the positive, cations are always positive, perhaps you can remember this, positive for a cat, instead of the correct spelling there for positive, can help you remember that. Okay, anions, I haven't got a trick there, but it's the other one, of course, and the naming now is going to apply some rules that we need to use. Okay, so the naming is going to uh, start with naming the cation first, okay? So let's name this cation correctly. The name uh, starts by naming the element. So we go name of element. Okay, so for this example, we have sodium, and then we're going to add the word ion after. So two words are required to name this. So this cation Na plus is named sodium ion. Okay. Um, good. And now let's name the anion. Okay, so to name the anion, as we said before, we need we start with the name of the element, but we're going to 
eliminate the last um, sort of portion and replace it with a suffix. Okay, so the we start with the name of element and add in to that one word the suffix id. Okay, so in our case for the chloride anion here, I'll script it above, we have Cl minus, we start with the name, so chlorine would otherwise kind of take us all the way to the neutral element, so we're going to cut off that last sort of syllable and instead replace that final piece with a suffix that is id. So this is the chloride ion. So um, some things that we also know for ionic compounds is that ionic compounds are always overall charge neutral. So to bring these together to give the formula that we see up top, we can't have overall excess charge. So we'll use subscripts to provide that balance. The subscripts reflect the population of one of these ions relative to the other to reflect that overall population to, to balance and establish electron neutrality. Okay, so we will balance these with, with subscripts. Okay, so let's put just that in writing here. So we've got that. So ionic compounds are always overall charge balanced, charge neutral. Okay. In our example for sodium chloride, it begins by recognizing that we have a single plus and a single minus on these. So one sodium plus one chloride would bring the correct population of each of those charges of opposite charge together to neutralize. Um, a formula left at this part is not as simplified as possible, so we can eliminate the ones and recognize that not writing anything is the same as writing one. So just writing NaCl with no subscripts is the fully correct version. If you write it with the subscripts with ones in those places, you're not yet fully simplified, and that would be incorrect. Okay, and so you can see here that we have provided that balance with subscripts, and we've simplified thereafter. Okay, um, also something to notice. Notice that we have not shown the charges in the formula for the compound. So we do not show charges in the formula. Okay, good. <clears throat> so let's um, try a couple more examples here. We'll uh, start by writing the formula and, and given information about the name. Okay, so we've just done an example here, so maybe we'll just start that so you know where we were. Uh, if we know sodium chloride for the compound name, notice we have dropped the ions from the former name. So we first named the ions, and then we drop the ions when we bring together the name of the, of the compound. Okay, sodium chloride is the compound name, And now the formula of NaCl should make more sense to you. Let's look at another one. Let's look at magnesium bromide. And walk our way through the logic to determine the formula for this uh, compound. So we have to go and identify the ions and the elements of those ions in the periodic table. So I see magnesium at the 12th position 
and I see bromide over here at the 35th position in the periodic table. So we can use the element symbols, magnesium. We now have to determine the charge. So we recognize that magnesium is in the second group. So it likes to go to that same charge level in a positive value, so 2 plus. Bromine being a, a halogen is in column 7. So the charge expected there is column number minus 8. So 7 minus 8 gives Br1 minus. And now we need to establish the formula and provide some subscripts to reflect the population. So if I had two bromines, that would overall neutralize the charge value of 2 plus from the 1 magnesium. Okay, A trick to do this is to consider using the new numbers of the charge and dropping them to opposite subscript positions to give us what's needed for the subscripts. After doing a drop like this, you may need to do a simplification, so this will at least get you uh, started. Okay. So that is to finally list the formula name. We are going to use magnesium bromide, condensing those two symbols together. And then we expect a magnesium sub 1 for the magnesium population. So we'll leave that subscript position empty. It'll mean 1 by default. And we'll bring the 2 value here to indicate that there are two bromides with a single minus charge, providing an overall 2 minus to the right-hand side of this formula to balance the 2 plus associated with a single magnesium cation. Okay, let's look at another one. How about sodium nitride? Okay, again, uh, we recognize that we are dealing with a metal. Sodium is on the metal side, and we are dealing with a non-metal. Uh, nitrogen is on the non-metal side, similar to what we saw in sodium chloride and similar to what we saw in magnesium bromide. Okay, we first do a little bit of work getting our ions well described. So we use the sodium. We see that it is in the first column. So that's going to be a one plus cation. Nitrogen, non-metal, likes to go negative in charge because it likes to accept electrons. We see that it is in the fifth column. So five minus eight gives us a three minus for that charge, nitride. Okay. And as we uh, bring these two together, we can see here that we're going to need our formula to be NaN, and now we have to put the subscripts there. So we can think about our kind of cross-drop trick and bring the three down and the one down. I don't expect to need anything on the nitrogen, but I am going to need three sodium cations to balance the three-fold negative charge on nitrogen. Okay. And as a last example, we'll look at magnesium phosphide. Okay, notice our suffix of "-ide", there, so it looks like we got to look for phosphorus in that case. So that's going to be the 15th element in the periodic table. And we've got to work with magnesium, which is the 12th element in the periodic table. Make a little bit of room for that here. Mg. Recognize that it likes to go 2 plus because it's in the second column. And we have the phosphorus making phosphide. Again, group 5. So that should go to a 5 minus 8, a 3 minus charge value. And now we can use those symbols in our formula. So it's going to be MGP. Uh, we can think about our cross drop trick. So here's where a 2 and a 3 will populate the subscripts in both positions this time. And we can inspect our formulas and see if any further simplification is needed. No. Okay. And as a last example, we'll try. Calcium oxide. And if you want to pause the video at this time, maybe you can practice this one before uh, simply watching me do it. And resume once you've had a chance to determine this formula. 
Okay, so the cation here, calcium, 2 plus second column, 20th element, 2 plus charge, and we're dealing with the anion of oxygen, so oxide, so that is 2 minus. We can try and do our drop tricks. We notice that the charge values are the same, so in doing our, our kind of moment momentary drop trick here, we notice that we are not yet simplified, so we have a little bit of work to do before we report our final answer. And so in this example, we simplify this to CaO, where one of each will provide the necessary population to overall neutralize the compound. CaO is the fully correct formula, not the over, um, not, not the one with the subscripts of two and each.